If you look really closely, you can see a guy waving his arms in the balcony, and that guy is me. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get free tickets to go see SNL in person, all in under eight minutes. So full disclosure, I've tried this twice and gotten it once, so there's a 50% success rate for me, but there are people that do this every single week and get tickets every single week. Okay, so the first thing you should know is that every August, SNL opens a ticket lottery for the upcoming season. They ask you to email them and tell them why you wanna see the show. I'm sure some people have gotten tickets through that lottery, but I've been entering it for years and I've never heard anything back, and I've never heard of anyone winning through that lottery. But that is one option. The second thing you need to know is that there's never a set number of people that get into the show. The cast, the writers, the hosts, the musical guests, they're all allotted tickets for their family and friends. So there might be some weeks where there are a lot of tickets allotted to the general public, and there might be other weeks where there are barely any. There isn't a ton of seating to begin with in that studio. So the best shot that an average person like you or me has at getting tickets to SNL is through the standby line. This is probably a good time to debunk the myth that they just hand out tickets to people who are wandering around 30 Rock or in the NBC store, or that you could just be at the right place at the right time and get tickets to SNL. That does not happen. But here's how the standby line works. NBC designates a space on the street where people can line up to get standby tickets. These aren't guaranteed tickets, but they're used to fill the seats that aren't already occupied. In a little bit, I'll get to what those numbers usually are. The time that they give out those tickets is at 7 a.m. the day of the show, so Saturday morning. So people start lining up hours before that so that they can get a good spot in line and therefore a lower ticket number. So before COVID, that was kind of just a free for all. People would start lining up daily in advance. I had a friend that wanted to go see the Harry Styles show. And she started camping out on the street on Tuesday or Wednesday of the week of the show. But since COVID, they've started a new system where you can now get a reservation card for the standby line, which is like a ticket that allows you to get a ticket that might get you into the show. And that happens at 10 a.m. on Friday. SNL posts a location on Twitter and Instagram for where you can come get a standby card starting at 10 a.m. And that card allows you to come back at 7 p.m. to start waiting in line ahead of the 7 7 a.m. ticket distribution on Saturday morning. Again, none of this is guaranteed, so you could sleep on the street overnight and still not make it into the show. Now, once 7 p.m. on Friday night rolls around, the people who did not get standby line cards are able to join the back of the line behind everyone who had a card from that morning. I know that was probably really confusing, so let me summarize. 10 a.m. Friday, you get a numbered standby line card. Between 6 and 7 p.m. on Friday, you show back up to start waiting in the standby line in the order that you got your standby line card. 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, the NBC pages come around to everyone who's in the standby line to give out tickets. At this point, you tell them whether you want a ticket to the live show, which goes on at 11.30 p.m., or the dress rehearsal, which goes on at 8 p.m. More on those numbers in just a second. Then, once you have your ticket, you have to come back later that night, a couple hours ahead of showtime, to wait in another line, in the same order, before you get into the studio. They will continue drawing people from this line until every seat is full, they shut the doors, and the show goes goes live. So hypothetically, you could get your standby card Friday morning, show back up at 7 p.m. on Friday night, spend the whole night on the street, get your standby ticket on Saturday morning at 7 a.m., show back up at 9.45 p.m., wait nearly two hours, and then at 11.30 p.m. you could be told that the studio is full and you don't have a spot inside. Yikes. So how can I improve my chances of getting in? I'm glad you asked. I mentioned numbers earlier. When the pages come around on Saturday morning, you have the chance to decide whether you wanna to try to see the live show or the dress rehearsal. And you can actually ask the pages how many tickets have been distributed for each one so far. And my best guess, because this changes every week, is that if your ticket number is 50 or below for either dress or live, you have a really good shot at getting into the studio. If your ticket is anywhere from 51 to 100, it'll be kind of a toss up depending on the week. And then I would say if you have a ticket above 100 or 101, it is pretty unlikely, not impossible, but pretty unlikely that you'll make it in to see the show. But again, this depends on how popular the host and the musical guest are that week and how many tickets the cast and crew have distributed to their guests. The show that I got to go to was the episode with J.J. Watt and Luke Combs. We found out that at 1 a.m. there were only about 80 people total in line. So we showed up at about 4 a.m. We're around number 100 in line, waited three hours until 7 a.m. and then requested tickets to the live show. About half of the people before us requested tickets to dress rehearsal, so we got tickets number 55 and 56 for the live show. So that night we showed up at 9.45 p.m., got back in the order that we were in, waited in line for close to two hours, and ended up being two of the last five people led into the studio. We were seated at 11.28 p.m., and the show went live at 11.30. So here are my strong recommendations. If you're a fan of SNL and not just coming to see the host or the musical guest, you should 100 
100% aim for a week when the line is gonna be smaller. And that can happen with a host or a musical guest who's not gonna draw a million fans. JJ Watt was super funny, but at the time he played for the Houston Texans, so he didn't have a ton of fans in New York City. So it worked out really well. A smaller line can also happen when there's gonna be bad weather. So if it's raining or snowing or really cold outside and you're willing to tough it out. Just out of curiosity, my wife and I went to see if we could get a standby card the Friday morning ahead of the Taylor Swift episode this year. And we totally underestimated the chaos that would ensue. There were like 500 people waiting outside for the 10 a.m. standby card distribution. And then a tweet went out saying that the cards were being distributed at a different location. So all of those people just literally stampeded. Yo, I think it's over there. <laughs> It was insane. Like I heard that a girl broke her arm. We knew that we'd be at least 200th in line, so it wasn't worth it for us to spend the night on the street just to almost certainly get turned away once the studio filled up the following night. So that's just an example of how a week with a really popular host can mean really slim chances of getting into the show. If you're only in town for the weekend, unfortunately there's no guarantee that you'll definitely be able to see the show, but there's always the chance that it works out well. Here are a couple other things that are important to know. One is that the people in line have to be the ones who are planning on seeing the show. They check your IDs and write down your names at multiple points so you can't reserve tickets for people that aren't there with you and you can't transfer your ticket to someone else. You're not actually allowed to leave the line except for small bathroom breaks and breaks to get food. As of right now you do have to be vaccinated to attend and the studio audience is required to wear masks for the duration of the show. Obviously that could change at some point in the future. And one more thing about dress rehearsal, if you do go to that show you will get to see a few more sketches because that's where they make the final decision about which sketches work best with a live audience. Usually there's slightly less demand for dress rehearsal rehearsal both from the cast and crew and from the standby line so requesting tickets for dress could improve your chances of getting in. Aside from the fact that it's not broadcast on TV they run dress rehearsal exactly like they would for the live show. And finally there are two big resources that I'm going to list in the description below. The first is the NBC website that talks about what you can and can't bring to the standby line. For example you're not allowed to bring tents with you. And the second is a Twitter account called the SNL standby line. That's not run by NBC but it is run by a few women who have done the standby line dozens of times and they have a really helpful how-to guide linked on their blog. They're also in the line almost every week and they tweet out updates of how long the line is. So that's how I found out that the line was only 80 people long at 1 a.m. But hey, if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you wanna see more, I made a video comparing my experience at Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers, Trevor Noah, and Stephen Colbert, and you can watch that right here. If you have any questions about the ticketing process, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and good luck getting tickets.